even buying at the very worst time you ever could have bought, and this was in Florida in Palm Beach Gardens, in one of the hottest markets at the highest peak of the bubble, time heals all. And the very cool part about it was they never paid more for their mortgage than they would have for rent, which I thought was super cool because what that tells you is that if they chose to sell that house, they no longer want to live in gardens, they're ready to move on. They could have rented it out because they're not going to sell it and lose 200 grand. They could have rented it out and allowed somebody else to get them where they are today, that half a million dollar equity position um, in owning that property free and clear. So I share that not because I think that we're going through that same cycle, but simply that even worst case scenarios in real estate with enough time on your side and proper management of debt, proper management of equity along the way, you're going to be in great shape. Um, in this case, 17 years later, they, they have a half million dollars free and clear. And all they did for that was go home every night to a home they liked and they made the, a, a monthly payment equivalent to or less than they would have been renting it for. So I share that story just for all the people out there like John who are hesitant. Yes, you know, it's it's anytime you buy a home, it's scary. I mean, I bought my first house for $64,000 and I was scared to death. So I just gave away my age. But anyway, yes, it's scary. But I encourage you, John, take that leap. If you have any questions about that, give us a shout, 561-291-8569. And that pushes to my office during the week. So hopefully that answers your question. I'm always open for deeper conversation on that if you need additional info after the show. So let's keep the show rolling. I'm going to throw it over to Dom for another question. George is asking, is it possible to get a mortgage on a mobile home? It's a double Y if that matters. Hey, George, that's a good question. Um, so, yes, it is possible. It's absolutely possible. Um, during COVID, there were restrictions in lending called overlays. And what an overlay is, it's a temporary guideline, if you will, that restricts or, or modifies some of the loan programs. So during COVID, some of the loan programs for mobile homes were no longer available. And um, some of them were only allowing double wides. But the reality is, a single wide mobile home or manufactured home, you can get a regular mortgage on the property VA, FHA, or conventional. There are some caveats, right? So it has to be at least newer than, I think it's June or July of 1976. So I use the rule of thumb 1977 or newer to play it safe. Um, and then the other caveat is you have to own the land. There's a process that that happens when you put a mobile home or manufactured home, double wide, triple wide, single wide, whatever, on a piece of property where you can now make it real property. It's now permanently affixed to the land. It's no longer titled. It's now deeded as an affixed home, if you will, like a permanent home to the property. So you have to own the land and um, that's the, that's the caveat. And then the age of the, of the uh, physical structure needs to be 1977 or newer with those two things. It's highly likely that you can get, conventional VA or FHA financing on that. So if you have any questions, give me a shout. I know in this rapidly appreciating um, housing cycle that we're in, a lot of people are turning to manufactured housing as an affordable option. So it's a real thing right now. And it's crazy to think some of the more desirable locations, people are paying two and three, three hundred fifty thousand dollars for some of these manufactured homes. So it, it's a real opportunity right now and happy to help you with that, George, if you have questions. So I'm going to keep this train rolling and throw it back to Dom for another one. Here's a text from Ken. What is the minimum credit score for a first time buyer? Hey, Candice, that's a great question. So um, th- it varies, right? All the different programs have different minimum credit scores, but you know, uh, and some of them leave it up to the lender, right? So like for a VA loan, technically the VA does not have a minimum credit score requirement. However, most lenders who fund VA loans do require a 580 credit score. Now, some will say 550, but the reality is, I I mean, I personally haven't had much luck below um, 580, and usually it requires a, a slightly higher down payment. Um, I'm sorry, in the case of FHA, a, a higher down payment and then a higher interest rate. So Here's the rule of thumb at the moment, and sometimes these fluctuate a little bit depending on market demand, meaning if somebody wants to bring more FHA um, paper, if you will, or fund more FHA mortgages onto their portfolio, they may drop it. So for a while, everybody was at a 620 threshold. 
So FHA typically is 580. VA, while there's no published minimum, is right now a, kind of the same, 580. Um, the reality is with a 620 or higher, you've given yourself a broader opportunity of program. So I hope that answers your question. Um, FHA and VA are looking for somewhere around a 580, and then 620 kind of opens up some additional programs for you. So hopefully that helps, and I'm going to keep it moving and throw it to Dom for another one, see if we can squeeze in another question. Jill sent this question. Are there any loans for buying a fixer-upper? This will be our home, but it seems like buying a house that needs work may make sense. Yeah, that's a great question. So, yeah, there are a lot of loan programs that will actually incorporate the renovation of um, the home into the purchase. So, great, great question. So, to answer your question, yes. Um, And I'm going to go through them rapidly and encourage you to follow up with me if you have more questions. So, um, Fannie Mae has a program called Homestyle. Freddie Mac has, I think it's called Choice Reno. And then FHA has a 203K program. Uh, both VA and USDA do renovation loans also to 100%. So great, great um, idea, by the way, looking at some of the um, less desirable homes that might need a little bit of work in this market to get your foot into that home ownership and enroll some of those reno costs into the loan program. So yeah, let's talk offline about that if you have more questions. 561-291-8569 is the anytime hotline and i'll be happy to answer those questions so you hear the music that means we're going to take a short break we'll be back in two minutes for more of your questions my name is mark itell this is the mr mortgage show and we'll be back right after this hey it's mark itell here host of the mr mortgage show and you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes. I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com www.moreaboutreverse.com Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and Dom and I do this every week right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. So thank you so much for your questions. Um, I know I rushed out of that last one a little bit, but to answer your question, yeah, there are a variety of loan programs that will allow you to acquire a property that uh, currently needs work and you can roll those renovation costs into the loan. So I think in those last 15 seconds, I spit out four or five of them, but I'm happy to go into further detail on those. Um, Just give us a shout, 561-291-8569, and uh, we'll dive deeper on that for you. So uh, always keep those questions coming. If you can't call or text, you can always visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage with no.com. 
or hit the Facebook page, uh, The Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook. So in the spirit of answering your questions, I'm going to give the mic back to Dom and see what we have teed up. Vincent left this message for us. If I get a reverse mortgage, can I rent my home out later if I move in with my daughter or an assisted living facility? Hey, Vincent, that's a really, really good question. And again, if you're a listener of the show, you know that reverse mortgages are close to my heart. I think they are an amazing product for the right people, but not the right product for everyone. I always caution you with that. But yeah, wonderful product. I'm always happy to to take the time to answer these questions. So um, no, technically, no, you can't rent your property out um, if you're going to move into your daughter's house. And, and here here's the stipulation, right? So if you vacate the property for 12 months or more, the note can be called due. So what they don't want to have happen is the property to be vacant or in this case to be rented. Um, if you go into a facility for rehab or you're in the facility for less than a year, but you're coming home, that's not a problem. But the way I understood that question, if you're going to be moving into a facility or moving into your children's house for a long period of time for care, then that's going to be an issue. There are some caveats to that, right? So if the um, reverse mortgage is on your primary and you have a second home, um, you can be in the second home for up to um, uh, not quite six months. So you need to be six months in a day in your primary. So if you're bouncing around the world and traveling and you're out of your property for six months, that's fine. As long as you meet the requirements of primary residency, which is six months in a day, you can do that. But if the if the reason you're out of the property is because you're in a, an assisted living or in care uh, with your children for the, the next step, if you will, um, you've entered that phase, then you're going to, you're going to want to sell the property or, or pay the note off. Um, I hope that answers the question. I know that's a big concern for a lot of people and there's no prepayment penalty. There's no limitation on you selling the property. Um, they just don't want you renting it out. And I did, I'm sorry, I touched on this and I skipped past it. There is a caveat. You can rent out a room in your property for additional income for what they call border income. If you wanted to do that, um, but you can't, you know, quote unquote, rent the property out and then go move um, into an assisted living facility. Uh, it, it, unless you're going to be in the assisted living so- facility for less than a year and you're coming back to the property. I um, hope that answers the question. I really feel like we need to kind of deep dive that. So I'm going to encourage you to give us a call at 561-291-8569. And again, that pushes to my office during the week um, when Dom and I are not in the studio. So Vincent, let's have a deeper conversation about that. But to answer your question, typically you're not going to take a reverse mortgage and then be able to rent that property out. Um, great idea. It would be awesome if you could do that because you're double dipping the income on the property. But um, yeah, most likely not going to happen. So uh, let me see what we have. Uh, Dom, do we have any additional questions? We do. Melvin just sent us this text. Melvin's asking, we are going to call your office for a refinance, but I'm curious to know how much debt we can pay off in the refinance. Hey, that's a great question, Melvin. So um, I'm going to throw some math at you, right? And typically what's going to happen is you're going to um, be limited by your loan to value. So some programs limit you at 75, some at 80% loan to value. So if you had a million dollar house, you could borrow $800,000. And then let's say you have a $500,000 first mortgage that would leave you $300,000 to pay off your debt. So I hope that helps. So look at your home's value. And then if you want a really good indication of value, I encourage you to call us or hit that website that we set up called freevaluereport.org. That's .org, not .com, freevaluereport.org, and just type in your address, and we'll email you back the full report, and it'll give you a really good idea of value, and then you can do that math. Just take 80% of that number and uh, subtract your current first mortgage or second first and second mortgage, whatever liens are on the property, subtract that, and that cash balance is going to be what's left to pay off your debt. So I hope that helps. On some of the larger properties, because I did throw a million dollar example out there for a reason, some of the larger properties, the loan programs will, they'll cap how much you can take out. So in that example of 75%, I want to share a win of the week, I guess, is where I'm going with this. We had a really cool experience this week. We had somebody whose property was worth um, $1.75 million, 
and they had a little over a half a million dollars um, of an existing loan. And they want to pull three quarters of a million dollars out of the property uh, for another opportunity. And that put. 